Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to this month's subscription box. Today, we've got a special ring plan, just like always. It's roughly based around the Kaiju glowstone ring I made a while back. We're gonna call this one the dragon scale ring. Um, it's pretty much, you've got all the ingredients to do the Kaiju, but we added a bunch of extras with it just to kind of help spice things up and uh, just give you guys a lot more variety and freebies to work with. All right, let's check out what we got here. So first of all, our blank. This is brand new. These are carbon fiber blanks. These are awesome. They give you so much amazing, cool, interesting contrast. And they have a really cool pattern that the fiber of the carbon fiber itself gives it. So really interesting. It's relatively soft, so uh, it can be a little bit challenging to work with. So I'm gonna have plenty of uh, pointers for you guys to help you use this new material if you've never used it before. And then let's go straight to inlay materials. Fairly interesting for this ring. So I'm uh, at this point I still haven't decided if I want to use the copper or not. I wanted to throw this in here because I think it'll add a very cool, very interesting flare and contrast to the whole ring. Think of uh, the copper with black, very contrasty, even contrasty with this green we've got going over here. So it's gonna be, and I, I think the colors all go well together as well, but I think for this ring, I'm going to leave the copper shavings out. That's not to say that you guys can't do it and it, that it won't look cool and amazing, but I'm gonna choose to leave that out, but we give you guys the choice and we include it for free. So uh, that's just a nice little addition. And then we've got our two opal colors here. So we've got the darker green as well as the uh, brighter neon green. So what I'm going to do, and again, you guys can literally make the ring however you want, there's no rules, but I'm going to use mainly the darker green opal, and I'm going to crush up some pieces of this neon green, and I'm going to use just small pieces in there, just kind of a little accent, just kind of like a little like starburst in the uh, ring inlay itself. I think it'll be a really cool effect, but we'll mainly focus on having uh, this in there. So. Uh, that's it for the inlay materials. That's the strategy that I've thought out in my mind. I'd love to see your guys' variations and ideas and how you get creative with stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna do and those are the reasons why. And then let's go into the glow powders, pigments, all of that. Here's the uh, mixing vial we include. We, we made it smaller, we realized that uh, hardly ever, if ever, do you use a full entire vial at a time? The way I like to do it is I like to make smaller quantities that I can use up. So I'll, I'll use maybe a third of my uh, glow reserve and a tenth of my pigment, and that'll be enough for a couple of rings, but I don't wanna keep that color permanently necessarily, so it allows me to empty it out, uh, reuse it over uh, several times. So that just kinda makes it a little bit easier for you guys to keep track of what's what. Now, here we've got um, several different options. So we've got our uh, standard uncolored glow. We're going to mix that with a bit of black pigment to give it a dark contrasty background that will match the carbon fiber we've got here. And then it's really gonna help this kinda shine and show, just highlight the uniqueness that it has. And then I've got this neon green glow powder. And what I was thinking was kind of along the exact same lines of what I want to use the neon opal for is just use it as sort of an accent. Use just a little bit of it to kind of highlight stuff. You guys can choose not to use it. You can choose not to use the neon as well. I don't need to say this over and over. You guys get it. Um, but I'm going to use just a kind of a splash of this, a splash of this, but mainly focus on the materials you see right here. So these are gonna be the main uh, materials I stick with. Little accents of these should make for a really cool ring. I've gotta get my uh, mandrel out and ready. Let's see what size, this is my medium size here. I've got a size 11 ring blank. Um, that could work on that, but I think I'm gonna jump up to my larger size here. There we go. So uh, I've said this in previous uh, videos before, but we intentionally have some overlap on the way the mandrels work because the further back on the mandrel you get, the more challenging it can be to get your ring mounted on there because uh, um, the geometry of it. So the uh, 
the little splines, there's four splines on each mandrel, they come out a lot further on the end than they do here because the pivot point starts here. So it kind of bends like that. So it's kind of challenging to use the final steps and it's also a little bit more challenging to get it perfectly centered. So that's why we designed them to overlap this is like an industry first. This was one of the biggest things that I wanted in a mandrel design when I was de designing these. And it works wonderfully. So I'm gonna use this larger one. It's gonna work better for us, work easier, give us better results. It's also safer to work with because it's further away from the lathe. So uh, that is a great bit of help that that gives. And then, um, here's that copper. Set that aside again. I've just got my safety gear. So my face shield, you can see that's, uh, splattered all over, that's because it, it gets used and it's good. I don't want to get hit with any debris. And then a dust mask. Anytime you're dealing with any sort of particulate, you really want to have a dust mask on, especially with carbon fiber. The carbon fiber doesn't break down in your body if you inhale it, so it can be bad. That's why miners will get uh, coal miners lung. So always wear a dust mask. You don't want to inhale any of that. If you wet sand, it keeps the dust down probably gets rid of 90% of the dust if you wet sand. So uh, just always be aware of safety. You, you, you know, you've only got one set of lungs, you've only got one face, you've only got one body. Always be safe, know your limits, especially if you're just getting into this and you're not super comfortable with stuff, you always would rather be uh, safe than sorry. That's what they say. So anyways, that's kind of a bit of a long-winded intro, but I had a lot to talk about this month. So hope you guys uh, stuck around with me through that. We're gonna get straight into the ring making. Um, I'm not gonna have too much to say as far as inlay goes. I already talked about my strategy, um, so that's pretty much it. Inlaying wise, I'm just gonna pack a bunch of the darker green opal in there. Um, once we get to the grinding down on the ring, that's when I'm gonna have some more tips and tricks for you because the ca uh, carbon fiber is a little bit trickier to work with. So um, we'll get to that point and I'll check back in with you guys. Let's do it. All right, let's get our uh, glow powder mixed. I usually try to do about enough to make two rings just in case I mess up. I could get my tweezers out and lay these one by one, but for now, I'm just going to get, this is just a lid to a box. I'm gonna put it underneath. This will catch any excess opal. I'm just gonna pour it straight in there. If I run out, I'll uh, fill it back up. Oh. That's pretty much inlaid. But if I ran out, all I gotta do is dump the excess back in, recycle the opal pieces and go around again. So that's good. There are some little gaps in here, um, but I, so I could fit a little bit more in here, but I don't want to. I, I wanna leave a little bit of room for our glow powder and other colors of opal. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna go around, cherry pick, and just make sure the pieces are in here securely. You don't want to have pieces that are just gonna fall out on you. So, anything that's kinda teetering, this is just kinda poking in there. It's not anchored in securely. I'm just gonna pull that out. This, I'm gonna push that down. This piece, that's not doing anything. Just make sure every piece has a good spot or else remove it. Because it's just going to fall out later and leave a void in your ring. You don't want that. Perfect. I've got all the pieces in there anchored nice and securely looking great. Now I'm going to do a layer or two glow powder, then we'll switch and start doing our additional ingredients.
So guys, as I'm doing this, I'm kind of figuring my technique out. What I'm liking here is uh, I'm just trying to sort of spray it. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm having a hard time describing what I want to do. I don't want it to be very even. I just want little, uh, tiny little clumps of the green glow powder. At this point, I've got it inlaid how I want. I'm going to do a sample here just on the metal of the mandrel. So you can see this. I think of it kind of like if you imagine like spray paint where you've got all the little particles that come out. The, uh, the more little like kind of particles and spots you have, the better I think it looks, especially for this design itself. So I'm trying to go kind of a little bit up high to give the clumps a chance to spread out. And then just do a really light tap. And I'm getting nice uh, separated. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Just all these little dots of green. They're nice and separated from each other. They just kind of look like little cosmic explosions. It's pretty cool. So I'm being very uh, careful not to clump things up too much. Okay, so I went all the way around the ring with the neon glow powder as well as the neon opal. I really like the distribution of everything how I've got it now. So what you traditionally do from here is you just repeat the process until you build up layers high enough to cover the edge of the carbon fiber. Then you uh, grind it all down and uh, just sand and polish it up and you should be good to go. Um, the reason you uh, have to do that, you're kind of covering yourself up every time you go and uh, you guys might be thinking that that's a little bit redundant. Like if you're just gonna cover up your work, why are you bothering? The reason we do that is because even right now there are points on the ring where it's sticking above the surface. So that's gonna be visible in the final product. But there are some points like down in these little craters where uh, it's not going to be, or where it will be covered up. So none of that will be visible. So if we just keep repeating this pattern in really thin layers over and over and over. Once we sand down through it, um, as long as we are pretty consistent with our technique all the way um, to the top, once we sand it down, we should have a very similar effect to this. So um, that's why you start out like this. Um, you can go ahead and just repeat the same process and just layer it up slowly until you've got it to the height where you want. But there is another technique which you can do, which I wanna do in this video because I typically don't do it and I wanna show you guys just kind of your range of options. I particularly just really like the way the colors and everything is looking right now. So I don't wanna kind of risk messing that up by having to do that layer technique that I was describing. So I'm just gonna go with straight clear CA from here on out. So what that'll do is it kind of gives the ring an interesting depth to it. You can see down into it. It's not just this flat top surface and it's not just all sunken down below. You've got sections where the glow powder is completely exposed. You've got sections where it goes down, uh, you know, like almost even a full millimeter at some point. So you'll have this really interesting and cool distribution of uh, just layers and depths and all of that. So this should make for a cool effect. So I'll show this off. There are some reasons that you wouldn't want to do this. CA adhesive can yellow over time with direct uh, UV exposure. So uh, to limit that, just uh, fill the whole thing up with glow powder and it won't yellow at all over time. So um, there, there can be reasons that you don't want to do this. Because this is such a dark colored ring, you're not really going to notice any yellowing over time. So. Um, that should be totally fine on this one. If we were doing a really bright white ring that we wanted to stay looking clean for a long time, I wouldn't recommend that. So that's a great tip, especially some, one of you out there that might be selling rings on the side. You, uh, you don't want your rings to yellow. You don't want your customers coming back in six months with issues like that. So these are all the things that I've figured out over the past four years of doing these rings and just getting customer feedback, durability tests, everything like that. The way we do our inlays now, they are very durable. They last years and years and years. We don't do anything that'll yellow. We design our rings around that and we make sure that they're gonna be uh, just awesome, wonderful rings to own for many years to come for the owners. So um, all these tips I've got for you guys come with lots of experience. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not just making things up as I go. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that technique. I'm gonna do, uh, I think I'll use mostly thin CA, especially right now. It'd be really tricky to get medium viscosity. In fact, I'll show you an example. So there's kind of a, a pit right here. I kind of like that white background. It's kind of contrasty. Let's get that back. So it's hard to get the glue to go down in there perfectly. Okay, of course, 
when I try to show you guys it works perfectly. It's actually really good. I'm looking left and right. I, I don't see any air gaps. So that's ideal. That's what you typically want. And you can usually get away without needing to use super thin in this scenario. But you always are just going to have a higher risk of bubbles with it. So what I like to do is grab the super thin that gets in there and it just goes everywhere. You can see how it kind of spreads out it's just very quickly absorbs into every single little spot. So I'll just go around the ring a few times, do nothing but clear CA. Then we'll have it built up enough that we can harden it. We'll let it sit for about 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. It's kind of cold out here. I might even give it 20. We'll let that sit. Then we'll start grinding into it. We'll have an awesome looking ring. Let's do it. All right, it's been 20 minutes. This is uh, thoroughly hardened all the way through. If you're not sure, just wait another little while. It never hurts to wait. And if it's still a little bit wet on the inside, it's gonna give you problems, especially with trying to make the inlay nice and clear. It's gonna get all sorts of debris stuck in the sticky CA adhesive underneath and it's gonna be terrible. So yeah, I'm ready to go. I've got a bunch of uh, really rough Dremel bits ready to go here. So I'll use those to uh, sand the inlay down. Um, like I alluded to earlier, the carbon fiber is a little bit tricky to work with here. So I wanna be very, very careful not to touch the carbon fiber if at all possible. So what I'm going to do, it's like I do with most rings, but I just gotta be just twice as careful in this scenario. So I'm gonna go for all the high spots, anywhere where there's a big piece of opal sticking out. I'm gonna sand that down first. I'm gonna get it all uh, roughly kind of circular, but still bulging out a little bit. And then from that point, then I can turn the lathe on while I sand it down and I should get a nice, even, consistent sanding on it. And then I'll just stop as soon as I'm hitting the carbon fiber there. Then we'll move on to the next sanding step. So this will be fairly straightforward. Uh, I'll just be careful not to uh, ruin the bevels by sanding the edges too much. I don't wanna sand like this. I wanna sand perfectly parallel to the ring. That way we'll keep our bevels nice and crispy and good looking. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, I'm really close to being done with the rough grinding down, but I wanted to stop here to point a few things out because this is a really kind of informative spot we're at. So I've been very, very careful to this point to make sure that I've grinded it down very even. As you can see, the blank itself doesn't have any gouges in it. I haven't uh, got the sander stuck in a certain spot and uh, dug a hole in it anywhere, anything like that. It looks pretty much just like how it was when we started. I've, of course, I've probably uh, shaved off a fraction of a millimeter just by nature of that's how it goes. But it looks uh, really good, really solid. So at this point, I wanna just carefully go in and just fix any imperfections. So if you, like if I take my finger and kind of rub this, you can see the carbon fiber is nice and dark. But there's spots where there's still some glue on the edges here. We wanna get rid of all of that. We want the bare carbon fiber showing. So 
um, as long as you just kind of clean and dust it off, it'll reveal the places where you still need to touch. And I'm gonna be very careful. I'm just doing very light, quick taps on there. Again, I don't want to grind the Dremel down into the ring, because that's gonna uh, create a divot there. We really don't want that. So I'm just uh, going at kind of a medium RPM, I'm just very gently brushing over the top of it until I can see that we've gotten rid of all the excess adhesive and we're back to bare carbon fiber. Also, I've got a hole here, I need to patch that, so we'll do that in a sec. I'm putting barely any pressure here. I'm letting the sandpaper do all of the work. That's really what you want to do in this instant. Okay, I think that should be good. Yeah, once we do, there might be a teeny bit left over somewhere, but once we do all of the other sanding steps that we need to do, that'll get rid of everything. So I just need to address this one spot. This is an opal that flew out. Kind of tricky to see unless it's at an angle. Right there. An opal flew out of there. So um, we only had one piece and that's because I went at the very beginning and I took out all the troublesome pieces. This one I might have missed or it might have just been an unlucky piece that happened to fly out. Um, doesn't really matter, but what does matter is that we fix it. So I can uh, put a little opal in there. I could just do clear. It doesn't really matter. What I'm gonna do is just uh, our black base powder. That's typically the safest way to go. As long as your fingers are quite clean, mine are like a little bit dirty, but they're not greasy. They don't have uh, contaminants on them that are gonna ruin the bond between adhesives. So I'm going to just brush off the excess. Now you can see that I've got that light spot where it hasn't been wetted by the glue yet. So I'm going to, and this is, you really need ultra thin in this scenario. Medium won't really work. So that's where this is quite helpful. You can make it work with medium, I guess, but it's just not nearly as good and it's a lot more work too. Okay, so as you can see, it instantly blends in, the bad spot goes away. We're good to go. I'll give it a little spritz of accelerator. I always get really close with the accelerator in the video because uh, I want it to show in the frame so you guys know what I'm actually doing. But in reality, you guys should probably be back a couple more inches than that if you wanna not just drown the whole ring with the accelerator. Just an FYI if you're curious. Now let me rub this away. We should be ready to go ahead and grind the excess glue down. And as long as the divot that was originally there is still flush, we should be ready to proceed. Yep, it looks good. Okay, so there we go. We are in a really good position. The ring the shaping on it, it's looking wonderful. I'm gonna be very careful with all the sanding steps and we should be left with really nice results uh, when we're finished with the ring. If you're not, if, uh, if your ring doesn't look like this at this stage, it's gonna be very difficult to get it to look how it should by the end. But if it does look like this right now and at the end it doesn't look how I'm able to make it look, then your uh, issue is obviously somewhere between this point and our next sanding step. So um, if you're getting uh, issues with the way it's looking, really focus in on doing your sanding really carefully. I'm probably even going to, with this one, I want to keep the bevels nice and sharp. I like to get a metal block, put it behind my sandpaper. Where's a piece of sandpaper? Here we go. So I put it behind a piece of sandpaper and I use that to give me flat angles and I don't wiggle this back and forth at all. I just tap it to it you need to use multiple spots on the sandpaper because the sandpaper gets used up very quickly when you use it in this technique. But this will give us really nice results. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I've got another little hole I want to patch, but then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and begin sanding. Sanding is very straightforward. The more grits of sandpaper you use, the better your results are going to be. Uh, if you want to use 
fewer grits of sandpaper, you just do a more thorough job with each one. Um, over the years, I've kind of figured out what I like best. But if you're having any issues, just sand longer and use more grits. Don't be afraid to use big pieces. And the only place you can go wrong is if you're just over sanding the ring and ruining the shape of it. But other than that, your finish should always be better. The more sanding you do, the more grits you do. Okay. All right, those are all the holes patched up. I'm gonna harden that. I'll go ahead and sand it back down flush. I don't need to explain that all again. Once I get to that point, I'll uh, trim off my sandpaper. We'll uh, go around, we'll polish the whole thing. I'm just gonna use this booklet for that. What is this starting at? This goes, it's 180. Use anything between 220 and 180 to start out with, I recommend. It's going to 320, then it's going to 600. Then I'll use some uh, 1000. Yeah, I'll use some 1000 grit I've got over behind me. Then at that point, we'll switch over to the Patrick Adair Supplies Polish. That will really uh, make this ring pop and look fantastic. And we'll be done. Then we'll inspect it. We'll talk about what went right, what was good, what went bad, all of that. Let's go ahead and do it. Quick note guys, I'm halfway through sanding here. Um, you'll notice I never sanded the bevels with those lower grits of sandpaper. And the reason for that is because these ship with a really nice finish on them already. I'd say it's roughly equivalent to about 500, anywhere anywhere between 500 and 1000 grit is about what these have been finished to. So um, I don't need to sand that because all I'm gonna do is ruin the crispiness of my bevels. I don't know why I like saying crispiness so much, but anyways. Um, I'm not going to uh, sand on those lower grits, but now I'm halfway through sanding, so I've got my 600 grit here, as well as 1,000 grit here. I'm going to use these at this point, and I'll use my metal block like I was talking about earlier to make sure the bevels stay nice and sharp. Um, and that's just the reason I'm doing that. Um, a really good kind of tip I have for you then is to try not to get any CA adhesive on the bevels of the ring at all, because if you do, then you're gonna have to get rid of it. You're gonna have to probably even hit it with a Dremel. So that just makes it very hard to keep your bevels nice and sharp how you want them. So just try to avoid that. I was able to, and it's just gonna make our ring that much better. So now at this point, I'll just do some 600 grit being careful to keep it parallel to the surface of the ring again, like I did with the Dremel. So keep it parallel. Don't hold it at the edge at all because you're gonna ruin those pebbles. So uh, I know I've said it a thousand times, but it really is very, very important. So now I'll use this for the pebbles, like so. Do it with both grits of sandpaper. Then we'll polish it. This ring will be finished and it's gonna look so awesome. I'm excited. All right, the ring looks phenomenal so far, but we're ready to go ahead and give it that final pop with this Patrick Adair Supplies polish. I'm just gonna turn the lathe on slowly, squirt out just a, a bit, not too much. You don't need very much, especially on carbon fiber. So 
I would say kind of a rule of thumb with carbon fiber, this polish, it really does work very well on carbon fiber as well as plastics. Um, so you're only gonna need, so let's say I polish this for about 30 seconds to get the desired effect. I'd recommend spending about three times that amount if you're doing metal. So if I do 30 seconds here, it's gonna look fantastic. That's probably even a little bit overkill. I'd recommend doing a minute and 30 seconds if you wanna get that same uh, level of perfection with metal. So carbon fiber goes a lot easier. I could honestly probably do this in five seconds with the lathe turned to max and it'd be pretty good. But you might as well be thorough. It doesn't take too long. So I'll do maybe even two layers of polish. I've just got a lens wipe here. I'm gonna hold it to the lathe. What you wanna look for is uh, black coming off on your lens wipe. That means the polish is doing its job. It's breaking particles down to the point where they're so small that they're just black. So I'll keep going. My RPMs aren't super high on the lathe. The faster your RPMs, the faster it goes, but it's also a little more dangerous. And I like to just take my time anyways. So there's black all over. That's a good sign. I've got a clean side here. I'm gonna go ahead and just do another go. There we go. I've got more than enough polish there. And just hit it. And if you guys have the three kit, the three set that goes rough, all in one and mirror, just do them in succession from each other. One thing to note is be careful to remove all of the previous steps polish. So if you think of it as in terms of like particles, the rough polish is made of larger particles. If you still have a bunch of those rough particles sitting on your ring and you move on to the next one, you're not gonna do any good. So you gotta clean it off thoroughly between all your steps. You should get good results there. This is the all-in-one polish. It does a really, really good job, especially for the fact that it's just one polish. So I just use this. I like to keep it simple, but I know there's a lot of perfectionists out there that want that extra finish. But there we go, check this out. This is incredible and I, I'm i serious when I say this, I, like, I, I really would love to find a polish that works better because uh, the better the polish, the better I like it obviously. But I don't think there's another polish out there. If you guys can find one, let us know. But this polish is formulated to work incredibly well on all sorts of materials and on carbon fiber, it really does kind of just go the extra mile. It looks amazing. So I'm gonna go get this cleaned up a little bit better. This looks absolutely killer right now and it is incredibly lightweight. You guys have used ceramic before. It's lightweight stuff, but it makes it, I mean, this ring feels like nothing. It's like a joke to hold it. I feel like I'm literally not holding anything between my fingers. So I'm gonna clean it off. Super uh, gunked up right now. Then we'll get some nice up close shots and looks at it and we'll talk about what went well with this ring and anything we'd like to change. All right, here's the grand reveal. Look at that. So insane, the opal is so colorful, it's ridiculous. And the carbon fiber, that looks so much better than how it did when we started. Almost like a metal, like a black metal. It's Amazing. I'm gonna get the scale out and we're gonna weigh this compared to a ring here in a second. But for now, let's uh, go over a little bit. Let's talk about what we did and how it affected the ring. So I really love the darker emerald that we used. It's got such a colorful palette that the iridescence of it gives off. It's amazing. And then you can see those small little, let's see how close can I get. Just the teeny little neon green opal pieces. They look wonderful. They add such a nice just speck of very bright, punchy color to it. And then same with the neon glow powder. This kind of had the exact same strategy to them. Except for the neon glow powder will of course glow. It will glow fairly bright. So this should have some really cool glow shots. We'll make sure to pack a bunch of those in at the end. So that looks awesome. I don't know if I have anything I'd really change. I'm, I'm literally so stoked with the way this rig turned out. I'm just kind of staring at this, getting lost for words. So, uh, you know, the copper, that would have been great to add 
you guys can envision it, just a wonderful amount of contrast. But sometimes it's uh, better to keep things simple, not go too complex. So I like the way this turned out, but I don't think it would look bad if we added copper to it. Yeah, other color options would be cool. Um, and this glare of light right here, you can really see any imperfections. So you can see right here, it's a teeny little void. That's not gonna cause any problems. Doesn't make the ring look any worse. It's not gonna be, uh, like it, it's not gonna be not durable. Don't know. It's not gonna be weak because of that. So I could patch it. It just uh, not really be worth your time. This is, remember, this is like two times macro at this point. So any imperfections are gonna be greatly highlighted here. Anyways, I'm kind of rambling at this point. This ring looks really, really good. It's incredibly comfortable. I'm gonna get out the scale. We're gonna weigh it against my superconductor ring here, and then if I can find another glowstone ring laying around, we'll weigh it against that too, let's do it. All right, I've got my scale here. I've got three rings to compare. Let's start off with my gold superconductor ring. This weighs about what a tungsten glowstone ring would weigh. I just couldn't find one, so we'll use this. That is 10.9 grams, I believe, yep. Ceramic is very lightweight, still quite strong. This is five, so that's literally half the weight. 1.5, that is absurd. I'm a little bit blown back here. I, I knew carbon fiber was the lightweight king. I didn't, honestly, I don't, I wouldn't have guessed. It's about a quarter of the weight of this ceramic ring. That is absurd. And it's like, that's lighter than the air that was surrounding your finger in the first place. Not really, but like, we're starting to push it. This is what got me started with ring making. I started with carbon fiber rings because they're so wonderful. They're strong, they're incredibly lightweight, they're very comfortable, they look great. I love carbon fiber, really happy to be sharing it with you guys. These results at the end here genuinely caught me off guard. I am very happy to have made this ring. I hope you guys will love and cherish the rings you make from it. They're gonna be amazing, I hope they are. And I hope you share pictures with us in the Facebook group. That's Part of the funnest thing that I get to do is get in that Facebook group and see all the creativity going on. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next month. I am very happy to have made this ring. I hope you guys will love and cherish the rings you make from it. They're gonna be amazing. I hope they are. And I hope you share pictures with us in the Facebook group. That's part of the funnest thing that I get to do is get in that Facebook group and see all the creativity going on. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next month.